compute the Laplace transform of the function f of t equals 2t minus 1. Then verify your answer by computing the Laplace transform of y prime in the initial value problem y prime equals 2, y of 0 equals minus 1. Recall the definition of the Laplace transform. So if I have function f of t, so Laplace transform is going to give me back another function. The variable is going to be s. We define this by taking f of t against e to the minus st. Take the integral with respect to t. So s is going to be treated as a constant. And our limits are going to go from 0 to plus infinity. So we have an improper integral here. And so we're just taking this integral. And then for this top limit, we let the limit as t goes to infinity and see if something comes out. Now, in our special case, take the Laplace transform of 2t minus 1, put it in the definition. Then, because we have an integral, what can we do? We could break it apart. I could pull the numbers out. So we're really looking at twice the Laplace transform of t minus the Laplace transform of 1. So this is just verifying the linear property of the Laplace transform. You could break up sums. You could factor out numbers. So, Let's do each piece here. We'll do L of t and L of 1. So for the Laplace transform of 1, what do we do? I'm going to put 1 in for f of t. So we're taking the antiderivative here of e to the minus st, and then we're going to put in 0 and infinity. OK, we do our u substitution. It gives me 1 over minus s e to the minus st. And then our limits are going to be 0 and infinity. Now, this is really going to be a limit as we go off to infinity. So the thing to note here is that I want s greater than 0. If that's the case, we're looking at a function with a negative exponent, which means we're looking at something like e to the minus t. So as I go off to infinity to the right, this is going to go down to 0. If I were to let s be negative, we'd have a problem. Then as I take the limit as we go off to a plus infinity, this thing's going to go up. And so we're not going to be able to work with this. OK. so. As we take our limits, note we'll have 0 minus 1. I have a 1 over minus s, so out comes a 1 over s. As long as we agree, s is positive. Now, Laplace transform of t, same idea. We put it in. And then here you're going to note, OK, this s is a constant. So we're going to do an integration by parts. So the way we do the integration by parts here, I want to drive down these t's. Okay, if we had t to the n, you would push down t to the n minus 1 and then keep doing that. So we're going to let our u be equal to t. Then du is equal to dt. And then we're going to get an integral which won't have powers of t in it. Now, that's going to mean dv is going to be equal to e to the minus st dt. So we take the antiderivative here. We're going to get v equals minus 1 over s e to the minus st. Now we just apply integration by parts formula. Multiply down the diagonal. So I have a minus ts e to the minus st. OK, let's do the limits for this right now. So if the 0 goes in, 0 comes out because we have a t here. Then for the infinite limit, what are we going to do? I'm looking at essentially t over e to the minus st. OK, might as well pretend that's e to the t. It's going to give you the same argument. So if I'm looking at t over e to the t, I want t to go off to infinity. Note, we're going to have infinite over infinite. It's going to be an indeterminate form. So I want to use Lehopital's rule. So I take derivative top and bottom. It's going to give me a 1 over my e to the t. And then when we put that infinite limit back in for top and bottom, we're going to go to 0. So this whole term here goes to a 0. What are we going to be left with? So we've taken care of the diagonal part. I have to integrate up this column and then subtract. So this minus sign is going to turn to a plus. OK, the 1 over s, we're integrating with respect to t. So I can just pull that out in front. So we have a 1 over s. And then you'll note we just did this integral. This is going to give me 1 over s. So that's just L of 1. So what's going to come out? We're going to have 1 over s, 1 over s. So I get a 1 over s squared. So that's going to be the Laplace transform of t. Now we put everything back together. What comes out? of Laplace transform of 2t minus 1 equals 2 over s squared minus 1 over s. 
So that's my answer. Now, let's check our answer against the initial value problem. So we had y prime is equal to 2, y of 0 equals minus 1. So note, if I had f of t equal to 2t minus 1, f prime is 2, f of 0 is equal to minus 1. So this is going to be the unique solution of our initial value problem. So if I find the Laplace transform of y using this data, I should get the same exact answer for the Laplace transform 2t minus 1. Now, to make this work, there's going to be a formula for the Laplace transform of a derivative. So that's something, if you're going to memorize things that go with the Laplace transform, this is one of those things. So you'll have Laplace transform of y prime equals Laplace transform of y times s minus y zero. So the way you get this is going to be by an integration by parts. Okay, I have that in another video. So let's see what happens. So using our formula, okay, what are we going to have? We're going to have L of y prime, okay, y prime is equal to 2. So we can bring the 2 out, and then I have Laplace transform of 1, which we've already calculated to be 1 over s. So Laplace transform of y prime is going to be equal to 2 over s if we calculate directly. So that's using this equation here. Now, if I use this equation here, we're going to have 2 over s, which I just computed, is equal to s times the Laplace transform of y minus y zero, so that's going to be plus one. So these two terms are equal, so now I can just isolate Laplace transform of y. So push the one to the other side, put everything in a common fraction, then I can just divide by s. So what comes out, it's going to be two over s squared minus one over s, and that checks our answer. Now, Take a look at the general formula for the Laplace transform of t to the n. General formula is going to be n factorial over s to the n plus 1. We've already seen two cases of this. When n is equal to 0, taking the Laplace transform of 1. Here, 0 factorial is equal to 1, so we get 1 over s. That checks out. If I have n equal to 1, look at the Laplace transform of t. 1 factorial is 1. So I'm looking at 1 over s squared, and again, we've already seen that. Now, in general, let's do the proof by induction. So for our base case, when n is equal to 0, we have Laplace transform of 1 is equal to 0 factorial over s, which is 1 over s, and we've seen, using the definition, that works out. Okay, let's assume formula is true for n minus 1, where n is positive. So we're assuming that Laplace transform of t to the n minus 1 is going to be equal to n minus 1 factorial over s to the n. Take the Laplace transform of t to the n. So we write down our definition. And then we're going to do an integration by parts. So as usual, we're going to drive down the exponent because I want to get down to Laplace transform of t to the n minus 1. So we'll let u be equal to t to the n. dv will be what's left over, e to the minus s t dt. Remember, the s is a constant. So if I work things out, we'll have that v is equal to, okay, any derivative of this, minus one over s, e to the minus st. du is gonna be equal to, okay, we take the derivative with respect to t, n t to the n minus one dt. Now, we apply our integration by parts formula. So if I go down the diagonal, what happens? Now, since n is positive, if I put zero in here, zero comes out. Then for the infinite limit, what are we going to have? Well, essentially we're looking at t to the nth power over e to the st. Now, we're going to assume s is positive. Okay, you might as well let it be equal to one just to see how things work. So we're looking at t to the n over e to the t. Take the limit as you go to infinity. We have the indeterminate form infinite over infinite. So you're going to keep applying a Lehapital's rule to get the top term to go to a 1. Then the limit comes out, it's going to be 0. So the contribution from this term is going to be a 0. What's left over? We subtract off what we get when we integrate up this column. So the minus sign turns to a plus sign. I could pull out an n over s because we're integrating with respect to t. 
And then what's left over is just gonna be the Laplace transform of t to the n minus one. So what do I have? The Laplace transform of t to the n equals n over s, Laplace transform of t to the n minus one. By assumption, that's gonna be n minus one factorial over s to the n. And then when I combine things, we get n factorial over s to the n plus one. So that shows that our formula checks out. So our induction step's true, so the statement's true in general.